Are you wondering how to cover grade your walk footage correctly? If you're like me and you just bought your new camera and start shooting a lot of walk footage because you want your videos to have those amazing Hollywood covers or even the Sam Calder look, but when you bring your footage to Premiere you're getting confused which LUT should you apply and what are the correct steps, don't worry, one week ago I was confused as well. In this video I'll share my experience how I got more confident working with log footage and applying LUTs. Now intro. Hey there, my name is Gabriel and on my channel you can find a lot of tutorials and travel videos, so if you're new, don't forget to smash the subscribe button. A few months ago I bought Canon EOS R and of course I started shooting Seawalk, but unfortunately I really didn't understand how to cover grade it correctly. The first thing everyone is telling you to do is to go to the Canon website and to download their standard LUTs. Unfortunately Canon did the situation even worse because when you download the LUTs, there are thousands of them and it's not really clear which one should you use. In the download pack there are several PDFs which should explain how should you work with the LUTs, but they're really not clear. Of course once you get the system it's becoming more clear how to work with them, but you really need to know some things in advance. Now let's start solving the puzzle. The first thing we need to know is what is REC709 and BT2020. Both terms are referring to cover space. There are a lot of other cover spaces, but to keep it simple I'll just stick to REC709 and BT2020. REC709 looks like that and BT2020 looks like that. You, don't care what people say, people say, people say. you can see that REC709 lives in BT2020. BT2020 has much more covers than REC709. If you're doing photography most probably you're familiar with sRGB. That's REC709. The next piece of our puzzle is to understand in which cover space our camera is recording. And to find the answer of that one I even had to read the manual because nobody was answering that on the forums. But in the manual I found it immediately. Most of the DSLRs and the mirrorless cameras are shooting in 8 bits. That means that they're shooting in REC709. Of course Canon allows you to record with an external recorder and in that case you're able to record in 10 bit. When you record in 10 bit the camera is automatically recording more covers and it has to move from REC709 to a bigger cover space like BT2020. So you can say that when you're recording in 10 bits you're automatically going to BT2020. After we know that it's time to move to cover grading with LUTs. There are two types of LUTs. Normalizing and creatives. Normalizing LUTs are your starting point, they'll bring your footage to a normal covers. Most of the creative LUTs are designed to be applied only after you normalize your footage. You can use them even without normalizing the footage, but you'll not get that consistent result. The LUTs which you're getting from the Canon website are the normalizing LUTs. Now let's check how to work with them. But first we have to understand how to read them. That's how the Canon LUTs are named. Let's start decoding. The first part of the name is saying from which cover space and gamma you are starting. The second part is saying to which one you are converting. If you pay close attention you'll notice the input and the output names consist of two parts. The first one is the gamut and the second one is the gamma. Now what is the difference? The gamut is the cover space, REC709 or BT2020. And for the gamma I have to read your definition. The gamma correction, or often simply the gamma, is non-linear operation used to encode and decode luminance or tristimulus values. Tristimulus values are the covers. Or as far as I got, these are the covers. After that is coming the grid size of the LUT. Canon gives you three numbers. The smaller the number, the faster will be the rendering. For my type of videos, which are going mainly on social media, 17 is good enough. Here is coming the fun part, range. You have two options, full and narrow. The difference is how the histogram will be stretched. The full range version of wide DR curves is compressed in a format to fit within 100% output. With the narrow version you have more information in the midtones and the shadows and the full version is more contrasty out of the box. The last thing is the version of the LUT. Now when we know all that information it's time to choose our LUT. Before we choose the LUT let's recap. I'm shooting in 8 bits that means I'm shooting in REC709. So from all the LUTs Canon provides me I see that there is one which is BT709 to BT709 and for me that looks the most logical choice because I'm recording in 709 cover space and I'm converting to REC709 cover space. Of course BT2020 to 709 will work as well but you're converting some invisible covers so most probably it will look the same but mathematically it will not be the same. Now let's jump to Premiere and see a real life example. The first thing to do is to apply the normalizing LUT. After that go to the creatives. 
and here you can apply the creative LUTs. For that example I will use orange and teal. And of course you can control the strength. After that we go back to basic and continue working on the color grading. When I'm color editing my goal is always to stretch the histogram on max without clipping any colors. Usually I reduce the highlights and push the shadows up, but here the shadows were really bright so I had to push them down. Played a bit with the whites and blacks, increase the contrast and we are done. Let's recap fast. First, insert your footage in Premiere and normalize it. Second, go to creative and apply creative LUT. And third, go and tweak your final adjustments. Because applying the normalizing and the creative LUT is only your starting point. Your footage still needs a little bit of tweaking after that. I hope this video was helpful and you understand better now how to work with log footage and what are LUTs for. I'm still new to color grading LUT footage. So if you're an expert, don't forget to leave your tips in the comments. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and see you in the next episode.